Have you been trying to edit your GoPro videos using GoPro Quick, but been quite frustrated with the limitations of the application? Well, today in this video, I wanted to share with you a free smartphone and desktop editing application that you can download to instantly improve your videos and work on longer format videos. What's up? For those of you that are new around here, my name is Jake Creech. I'm a travel filmmaker and content creator from Australia, helping you create better social media content. So today in this video, I wanted to share with you eight tips as to why I think you need to hit that top link of the description and download the CapCut free video editor for both your desktop and your smartphone. Unfortunately, GoPro Quick is only available on smartphone, whereas CapCut is available on both. And when it comes to evolving your skills as an editor, I highly recommend using a desktop or a laptop because this will enable you to better process larger files. It will help you to create more detailed long format projects whilst also editing off a much bigger screen. And in my opinion, that just makes the whole workflow more enjoyable. If you're just looking to edit videos that are longer than 30 seconds, use a desktop editor, sit down, get comfortable and really get in the zone when it comes to editing. So let's open up CapCut and let's go through some of these other amazing features. As soon as CapCut is downloaded onto your computer and you've opened it up, before you create a project, I recommend just dialing in some settings to make sure that you just set it up properly. So up here in the top right hand corner, we have a settings tab. Um, and if you click on that, you can choose where you'd like to save your project to. I recommend using an external hard drive, something which doesn't clog up your computer's internal storage space. Um, so let's just navigate. Obviously, I've got mine here saved to um, July, which is this external hard drive. So just select that folder. Um, and then also just in the performance over here, if we click at the top, we can also create proxies. Now this is super um, important for those of you that are shooting a lot of 4k and 5k video content that are wanting to speed up your workflow. Definitely switch this little toggle here to creating proxies turned on by default. Um, and again, select the folder as to where you'd like that to happen. So once you've done that, that's all dialed in, you can start and create a new project. Um, I've already got one here, so let's just open that. One of the main pillars of storytelling is being able to use text to effectively communicate your message or your story. So having, I guess, the ability to customize text, I believe is super important when it comes to editing. Unfortunately, GoPro Quick Templates text, yes, you have options to change that, but you don't really have the capability or the flexibility like you would in an application like CapCut. So jumping straight into to CapCut, I've got this vlog uh, edit that I've already started open here. And I just wanna give you an insight into how some of these texts look and feel. So very simple, I just press play. Immediately, I think using text like this, it's super captivating and it just straight away communicate what this video communicates, what this video is about. So this is obviously a daily vlog and we're exploring the Wit Sundays. To find all your texts, just top left hand corner of the video application suite, all you have to do is click on that text area and you can go through and you can look at all of these different templated texts that are available. So if I wanted to add more text to my video, if I click on the drop down text template, you'll notice that there's all these options when it comes to having different types of custom titles and text. And all I have to do is simply click and drag on that text and drag it over on top of my, my vlog, my workspace. And you'll notice that it will pop up very, easily, it's animated, it's super easy to drag and drop and add and to place wherever I want within my frame. Let's say I also wanna have this uh, particular animation up here over onto the left. I can just click and drag the text and I might make it smaller. So if I just drag that and then I might just drag it down here to the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And if I press play, I've now got this little follow animation which pops up. So you can go through and you can see up here in the top left hand panel, there's all these different awesome animated texts which you can use straight away. So that is one of the awesome reasons, especially when it comes to making long format videos like vlogs. Now something to note for those of you that are editing, um, these little icons here, pay note to those. So where it says like turn on the preview access or turn off linkage or turn on auto snapping, turn on main track magnet. 
If these are all highlighted, you'll notice that all your clips just magnetize and stick together. Now, if you want the liberty to just place your clips any part of the frame and stack them on top of each other, I would recommend turning off that magnet icon as well as the auto snapping. I'm just keeping on the linkage um, feature. Also, I highly recommend uh, learning the keyboard shortcuts. And if you see up here in the top right of the screen, you've got a shortcut panel. Um, so you can just have a quick look at some of those shortcuts and that's gonna aid you in better navigating the software. Uh, so command plus is zooming in and command minus is zooming out. I'm gonna zoom into this section over here. Bang, plus, 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 plus. Okay, so we've got some B-roll on top of our A-roll. We're obviously vlogging here, so we're talking about this particular vlog. If you guys have been enjoying this tutorial and you've learned something, I'd love it if you could punch that thumbs up button, or if you wanna just flick this tutorial to a mate that's also finding their feet in editing, um, yeah, that would help out. To add overlay to your project, it's super simple. All you have to do is navigate your way to wherever that content is saved and just drag and drop it. So let's say I wanna drag this on. I can just drag that there and you'll notice that it just quite simply just goes to wherever I put it. Um, Command minus again to just zoom out and see how it sits on the larger project. Uh, and if I just want to take a section of that particular, you know, overlay like this nice piece here, I'm just going to hit command B to cut and scrub across and then hit command B again to take that little section. I'm going to delete out the other parts and because it's B roll, what I'm going to also do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to separate the audio. Now I can either choose to keep that audio and use that for Foley, later in my edit, or I can just get rid of it altogether and just quite simply place that piece of footage on top of my, con my current A-roll. Now, Command plus to zoom in. Here we go. I might want to add a transition in between these two clips. So also right now, you'll see that it's not fully connected to the, if I press play. Yeah, there we go. Okay. So all I have to do is navigate my way up here to the transitions um, tab and you'll notice that there's loads of awesome transitions here that I can just scroll through, drag and drop in between those two clips. So maybe I want to have this like swirl transition. I'm just going to drag that, hover it over the two and preview Very through it. Yeah. Very cool. Um, the, like, there are so many epic transitions in CapCut. Um, one rule of thumb or like one, I guess, rule that I like to go by is just to sort of keep the same transitions in my edits. I don't like to have a million different transitions going on. So one of the ones that I used earlier in this particular edit was this, it's called old film. So if I just go into the camera transitions and if I swipe up, you'll see old film here. If I can, if I would drag that over and play through. It just keeps that B-roll looking nice and fresh. Next up on this ever-growing list of reasons as to why I would use CapCut over GoPro Quick to edit my videos is animation. Again, there is in effects here, top left-hand corner, you have this pretty extensive body of super fun drag and drop animations that you can just add to any part of your video. Um, get creative. There are some really interesting ones. Let's try this old tape one. If I just put that over here. All right, welcome to episode one of Rewilding. Okay, let's see that again. All right, welcome to episode one of Rewilding. So there you go. Like, it doesn't really particularly suit this edit, but what I think is cool is that there's just this huge catalog of animation that you can just drag and drop to your edit. Um, I highly recommend just going through those, especially if you're doing like channel intros, you wanna make a rad channel intro, go through some of these and like, yeah, work out whatever suits your taste. One of the areas that I think GoPro Quick does really well is actually the color grading feature. However, those color grading lookup tables that are available in GoPro Quick are sort of limited to the paid version. So what's cool with CapCut is that you can actually input your own custom LUTs into this video editing suite. So if you've downloaded, I don't know, our particular LUTs, which are also linked in the description, and you wanna use those lookup tables to color grade your GoPro footage, then that's another reason as to why you would use CapCut. And to do so, all you have to do to import custom LUTs is go over to the adjustments window, top left, and rather than, and just scroll down to LUT and then import. 
So then all you have to do is find where your LUTs are. I think they might be in the downloads or I could just search LUT, everyday LUT bundle, and let's go into the action LUTs, highlight those, open those, and they will open in. So then if I wanna just add one of those lookup tables, let's say I wanna add like gray skies or like this one or like sunset glow, maybe that one's a bit too much. So we might want that LUT on. And what's also cool is if you're not really stoked on the LUT itself, you can also tweak it over here in the adjustments. Um, so we can change the HSL, the hues, the saturations and the luminance, or we can just go over to the adjustments and we'll be like, ah, oh, it's a bit yellow. So let's just make it a little bit cooler and we might pull out a little bit of the saturation and there we go. Now that adjustment layer, right, not fully stoked on that. I'm going to go over here and make that zero. One That's a look, it's very much an aesthetic. Um, you know, it might not suit you, but I'm just showing you in this quick tutorial how you can create your own videos that have your complete identity as an editor littered throughout them. To record overlay, it's super simple. All you have to do is above the timeline, you'll see a little microphone icon. Click on the microphone icon and select the microphone you'd like to use to record your overlay. I'm going to use this Rode large diaphragm condenser microphone or podcast pod, <laughs> podcaster microphone. Um, so yeah, I'll select that one and I'll just hit record. Manta Ray Bay is just north of Airy Beach uh, and is full of manta rays. So there we go, it's, it's, it's that simple. And you notice that that little audio recording has just populated in here above my song. The last little area that I wanna run you through is creating keyframes so that you can either, well, I guess keyframe anything. It's super simple. Let's say for example, you want your a role, you know, your vlogging section to come in and you don't want that audio track to sound too loud. You want to duck it. You want it to sit underneath, you know, when you're talking. We start talking about here. And you notice the audio is just super loud. Now to duck that, we can just quite simply create a keyframe. So we click on the audio and on the right of this audio window in the top right you'll notice you can add a keyframe i'm going to add the keyframe there i'm going to move my playhead and then i'm going to drag the volume down probably want to bring it down to like i don't know minus 10 and you'll notice that if you look at the audio section on the timeline there's those two keyframes and the audio is going down play through if you guys have all right welcome to episode one we might want to bring it down a little further so we could create another keyframe that brings it right down. Welcome to episode one of Rewilding. Ah. It's Rewild Wednesday. If you guys have enjoyed today's tutorial and you wanna use some of these amazing creative features on your smartphone, then I highly recommend also downloading the CapCut app to your smartphone and watching this tutorial right here. Guys, thank you for checking out today's video and I'll see you guys in the next upload. Peace. Oh.